So let's try this one more time. Worship His Majesty unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom, authority flow from His throne unto His own, His anthem. the King. Majesty, worship His Majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified King of all the Kings. Let us begin with our call to worship and Mike will end up being, uh, will be our liturgist this morning. We gather here this day to hear God's word for us. We praise God for the opportunity to gather together. We are sent forth from this place to share God's transforming love. Lord, encourage us and empower us to do <clears throat> your will. Amen. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us much. We need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us. For our use thy faults prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us, thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us, thine we are. We are thine, thou dost befriend us, Be the guardian of our way. Flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear when we pray. Thou hast promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and part to free. Blessed Jesus, Blessed Jesus, we will early turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, we will early turn to Thee. Early let us seek Thy face. Let us do 
thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our bosoms fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, loved us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, loved us still. And now if you'll join in the prayer of confession. <clears throat> God of inf infinite mercy and love, we come before you this day knowing that we have not always been faithful to what you would have us do. We have too often turned our backs on those in need, choosing not to hear their cries. Forgive us, O Lord. We know that you do not want us to behave in this way. <clears throat> Your love and mercy so generously showered over us should be a beacon to guide our own actions. We make no excuses, for none would suffice. We ask your forgiveness and blessing, turning us again around and placing us on the path of compassion and peace. This prayer we offer in Jesus' name, amen. Listen to these words of assurance. God, its love is greater than our understanding and our comprehension. That love is continually given to each and every one of us each day. Rejoice, God's forgiving love is poured out for you now and always. Amen. So this morning we come to God with our prayers and our request. An update on Linda, she is, is recovering um, from her surgery. And it appears that um, uh, she, you know, she's going through what happens when you have a massive surgery, but she appears to be doing well. Um, we also have a couple of unspoken uh, medical requests. Um, and I just lift these loved ones, these, these to you and ask uh, for God's healing power to flow on their lives. And um, I, are there other requests? Um, I know, uh, uh, Mike, you had mentioned Mr. Lambert. Yeah. And what is his condition? Do you know? Well, I was, I asked for prayers for Walt Lambert's family. Okay. Week because he passed away. Oh, okay. I misunderstood last week. I appreciate the clarity. So we need to remember them in, in their grief. Yes. Any other prayer requests? Let us go to God in prayer. <clears throat> and we will close with, uh, we will close with the Lord's prayer. Lord, what a blessing it is to come together in this community of faith. We travel from all walks of life in different ages and stages and different backgrounds, and we are welcomed by your love and your presence. Today we bring before you the names of loved ones who are struggling with loss and with illness and depression and addiction, with alienation from those they love. And we pray that you will be with each one, laying your hand gently over their lives, healing and pouring out the balm of peace upon them. Lord, we lift up all those that are facing surgery and have health concerns, including these two unspoken requests. Lord, you know our hearts and our minds, and we lift them to you. We lift up our local community and we pray for continued protection and guidance. We ask that you would be with our first responders, our police and military, our nurses and doctors, 
all of those who rush into harm's way, firefighters, um, aid helpers after disasters like the horrible storms that have encountered. Lord, be with them, protect them, give them wisdom as to how to, to help and not hurt. Lord, we lift up those that are we consider essential and even non-essential who are willing to risk their own safety and their family's safety for others' needs. We especially include today, Lord, our teachers and staff, our parents and children who are facing an uncertain fall in school. And we just pray that wisdom would be the guiding hand through all that happens. And we pray that you would open opportunities that all may learn and grow in spite of the uncertainties and in spite of the barriers. Lord, we lift up our nation and our leaders, especially um, locally, state, nationally, and even globally, Lord. Their job is a very difficult one, and I just pray that your Holy Spirit uh, convicts them of wisdom that they need to follow through. God, uh, we ask that you would just pour your compassion and grace out upon this world and about all of us that are struggling. And Lord, give us wisdom and give us protection. We ask that you would be with pastors and religious leaders all over, that you would give them guidance and that the Holy Spirit would place your word in their heart and that we would speak forth what you would have them speak forth. Not just comfort, but also encouragement and words of hope. Lord, we lift up anyone who is suffering this morning and those that are affected by disasters. We lift up Bobby Abbott, LaVon Caton, Linda Clutter, Jacqueline Collier, Dora Mae Crawford, Steve Davis, Marilyn and Dick Eagles, Wayne Garcia, Isabel Geibel, Reverend Margaret Gilligan, Tracy Gunther, Debbie Hall and family, Sue Jenkins, Eva McLean, Dakota Miller, the Miller family in Iowa, Cheryl and Linda Mix, Vicki and Gerald Myers, Shirley Myers, Wayne and Alice Phillips, Roy and Vicki Ratzliff, Sherry Robbins, Marilyn Roberta, Joe Roker, Tom Sanderson, Charlene Schaefer, Monica Schaefer, the Ziegler family as Luke fights brain cancer, Cloetta Spearman, Matthew Stanley, Byron and Amy Ulrich, pastors everywhere, Wendy Wallace, Linda Wilson, and Lord, we do lift up those that have lost loved ones. Ray and uh, Ray Abbott and his family in the death of Bob, Alice Wardlow and her family in the loss of her sister, the uh, Linda Wilson and her family in the loss of her brother, Betty Combs and her family in the loss of Bob, Ron Cooper and his family in the death of his dad, Ernest, the family of Peggy Duran, Betty Fimley and family in the loss of Bob, the family of Jim Ford, the fa Re Regina Hickman and her family in the loss of her son, the family of Walt Lambert, Anthony Lobato and family in the loss of his mother, the family of Linda Damaris, Linda Mix and her family in the loss of her niece, the family of Bob Myers, Shirley Myers and her family in the loss of her brother, Bishop Karen and her family, and the loss of her mom, and Claudia and Jolene Robinson, and the loss of her loved one. Lord, we pray that you would hear our prayer and that you would pour your healing power upon these lives, and that not only would there be healing from 
physical infirmities, healing from surgeries, but healing of grief as well and protection for those that are doing the work that is so risky. We come to you and we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life forevermore. The epistle reading this morning is found in the book of Romans, chapter 11, verses 1 through 2 and 29 through 32. So I ask you, has God rejected his people? Absolutely not. I'm an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God hasn't rejected his people whom he knew in advance. God's gifts and calling can't be taken back. Once you were disobedient to God, but now you have mercy because they were disobedient. In the same way, they have also been disobedient because of the mercy that you received. So now they can receive mercy too. God has locked up all people in disobedience in order to have mercy on all of them. <clears throat> And our gospel is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. And it's entitled, The Canaanite Woman. From there, Jesus went to the regions of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from those territories came out and shouted, Show me mercy, son of David. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. But he didn't respond to her at all. His disciples came and urged him, send her away. She keeps shouting that after us. Jesus replied, I've been sent only to the lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. He replied, it is not good to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off their master's table. Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith. It will be just as you wish. And right then her daughter was healed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. To the lost sheep. This is a difficult message, so I ask you to pray with me as I seek God's guidance. Let us pray. As summer draws to a close, we begin to focus our attention to the activities of autumn. For some, it will mean preparing children for school. For others, youth will be preparing to enter college or the workforce or perhaps military service. Be with these precious little ones as they embark on life's journey. Be with each one of us as we encounter life's challenges. Open our hearts and our ears to receive your word this morning, your healing mercy, and your transforming love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
This morning's passages from Romans and Matthew address lost sheep as well as our prejudices. This passage about the Canaanite woman is difficult for us to read or hear in any translation. So it gives many scholars pause and pondering. Some scholars have said the translation from Aramaic to Greek to English made the passage unclear in its meaning. Some say that Jesus was just having a bad day, for surely Jesus would not turn anyone away. We do know that for the first 10 chapters of Matthew, the focus is clear that Jesus came for the Israelites. However, the encounter with the Canaanite woman caused a shift from Jesus for the Jews to Jesus for the world. Perhaps the Jewish writer of Matthew saw that Jesus' message was only for the chosen of Israel. And this encounter made him realize it was for all people everywhere. Or perhaps this encounter is an encounter that convinced Jesus to lead his disciples to reach the entire world, no matter their creed, the culture, or birth. Because the focus from this encounter up to and including the Great Commission at the end of Matthew focuses on all humanity. Jesus recognizes this Canaanite woman's faith. And compared to the Pharisees, or us church people, to whom he was trying to teach, she understood she was a lost sheep in need of a savior. Paul makes it very clear that there is no separation in God's love through Jesus, either male or female, slave or master, Greek or Jew. A lost sheep needs a savior, and that savior is Jesus. There is no room in God's love for our own prejudices and biases. Many of us are familiar with the legendary Billy Graham, an evangelist of all time, who counseled and pastored American presidents, both Republican and Democrat, with no favoritism for one over the other, having such an impartial impact on all of them because of his message and comfort to them, to remind them that God loves them and cares for them and will not desert them no matter what public opinion our critics had to say about them. Billy Graham understood what, what Jesus was trying to teach us in this passage. We are lost without God. It is only when we recognize we are sinners and ask Jesus to save us, to give us even just the crumbs off the table, to save us from ourselves so that we can begin a relationship with him and we can be transformed into a new creation birthed from Jesus' compassion, mercy, grace, and love. What is your relationship with Christ right now? Is your life missing something? Are you searching for something? Are you like the Canaanite woman who heard about a savior and believed the stories were true and sought healing for her daughter, risking persecution and oppression to speak to Jesus? God wants you to see that Christ is showing us what Christ is showing us in this passage. The time is now to remove the blinders and truly examine your life. Are you working your salvation out daily? Or have you had an encounter so long ago that you doubt that that encounter was real or not? If you ask Jesus to save you and you haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to transform your life into the image of Christ, changing your behavior, your attitudes, your countenance, your thoughts and actions, your speech, and even your daily walk, then you're inhibiting your salvation by not yielding to the Holy Spirit who convicts us to change. 
John Wesley referred to this as sanctifying and perfecting grace. Living transformed into the image of Christ may not be popular, and like the Canaanite woman may be risky. Billy Graham made enemies of those who once embraced him when he removed the segregation ropes from an arena in the South during the civil rights unrest of the 60s. Preaching to an integrated crowd about God's love for all, blacks, whites, all nationalities, that Jesus came for all humanity and to deny or separate anyone from an opportunity of salvation and worship is incomprehensible, for we are all brothers and sisters in the family of God. We are called to live in hope with open doors, open minds, and open hearts. Romans 11.33 tells us, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are God's judgments. How unscrutable are God's ways. This is what we mean by God's how is our why. We can't always figure out what God is doing, and we can't explain everything that Jesus said and did. But we don't have to. We just need to love God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength and love our neighbor, all of our neighbors, any of our neighbors, like ourselves. You see, in Paul's passage, he knew what it was like, for he had been a persecutor until Christ opened his eyes. It is my prayer this morning that you understand that Jesus is the Jesus of all. And I'm going to try to share with you, uh, most people don't realize that um, the Canaanite woman that we think about is not the way most people places um, show. And so let me pull it up for you. I thought I had it pulled up already. Sorry, I apologize. There it is. Now, most of us are more familiar with the Samaritan, the Samaritan woman. But most people do not understand that the Canaanite woman was definitely a woman of color. And the reason the disciples wanted her sent away is because remember the Jewish law said, these people are unclean. It is at this point that we see a very different Jesus in Matthew. We see the Jewish idea of uncleanness as being not acceptable to God. For it is God who makes us clean. No matter what our past, no matter what we've done, no matter what is perceived. And many times it's perception rather than actual fact. So I leave you this morning with Jesus who came for all who are lost sheep. And just like the sheep in the field, when Jesus went in search of the one, every single one of us are important. Amen. This morning, as we come to a time of commitment, let us remember the fact that uh, we are still having to work virtually. Those from Swatch will need to um, mail your your uh, donations into 
the post office box 626 in center. Um, or uh, for those that are in center, you may do the same thing or go online and make your uh, donation or text a donation. And I do want to take another opportunity to thank you so much for your faithfulness and for sticking by all of that's going on and for helping us to continue the ministries of God. I have been, uh, been sharing in the last couple of weeks the fact that our uh, 3%, which is above the 10% giving, is for worldwide missions, if you want to call it that, programs. And they are in need. And so I would ask you to prayerfully consider giving a special offering for those, um, those special missions. Um, today, I have a treat for you, and I realize it will be a little long, but um, I think it's worth sharing. I shared this week on the, um, the story behind the song. What better, a more appropriate song could we even look at than Amazing Grace this morning? Written by John Newton, who was a slave trader, who felt that, there, that this God, this Jesus, was nothing to him. And yet God, like he did with Paul, intervened and changed his life. He became an Anglican minister, and this song was written from his, the depths of his heart. And I will share Richard's version of this, which is an absolutely beautiful version. Please let me know if you can't see it, because you need to see his emotion as he sings this. Y'all see him? Can you all see him? No. No, you can't? Yeah, I see him. Okay. Let me, let me go back one more time then. <clears throat> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found was blind, but now I see twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers, tolls, and snares I have already. Oh, 
shield and portion be as long as life endures. Yeah, when this flesh and heart shall fail and more to life shall cease I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God. Praise then when we first begun. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I hope that brought tears to your eyes. Because to have a slave trader who's been changed, but radically changed by Christ, write this hymn. And then to have a descendant of one of those slaves that would have been on that boat sing it so heartfeltly. God can do greater things in our lives than we can even imagine. Amen to that. This morning as we close our benediction this morning, Okay, I think I shared the wrong thing. I don't know. All right, so I can't find it now. That's terrible, huh? <laughs> Let me share the benediction with you. May God's mercy and peace go with you as you re-enter God's world to serve those in need. Go in peace. Amen. And Richard's going to close this out with a soon, very soon. Let me pull that up real quick for you. Soon. And I know many of you kind of laugh at the fact that he's driving in a car while he's doing this, but you'd have to know Richard to know that's, that's Richard. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the King Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Hallelujah, hallelujah We are going to see the King No more crying there We are going to see the King no more crying there. We are going to see the King. No more crying there. We are 
door to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. God be blessed. So thank you for joining me this morning. And may you have a blessed week. Have a good week. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, Debbie. Mr. North. Hey, I got your. Okay, it would, it would cut out. It would cut.